Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Galen Harrison from the University of Chicago. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you today about a uh, survey-based experiment uh, I conducted with my co-authors. Uh, in particular, uh, Julia is going to be joining us for the Q&A. So big surprise, I'm going to start by talking about Compass. Um, Compass, the tool used to help courts make parole determinations by predicting the risk a uh, parole candidate would reoffend. So in 2016, ProPublica analyzed the risk scores from Compass and found that it was biased against African-American parole candidates. Uh, specifically, they found that African-American parole candidates were mistakenly classified as higher risk more often than white parole candidates. Uh, being classified as higher risk meant potentially being denied bail. Uh, the makers of Compass uh, argued that their tool was not biased because it had roughly the same error rate between white and African-American parole candidates. Um, in essence, this was an argument uh, that the rate of mistakes uh, was what mattered rather than the specific kinds of mistakes. Uh, at the same time, ProPublica was pointing to the disparities and false positives and arguing that this property made Compass unfair. So subsequent analyses have pointed out that these two properties are incompatible. You cannot simultaneously equalize uh, accuracy and equalize false positives. You have to choose either the model on the left or the hypothetical model on the right, uh, or some linear combination of the two. Um, so we can see Compass as a debate about fairness definitions. Um, equalizing accuracy and equalizing false positives are two types of, two ways of defining fairness, uh, but there are many other definitions. Um, a lot of them, and probably more. Uh, so these definitions vary based on the sorts of problems they have in mind and therefore the sorts of properties they consider. So we don't have a complete map of the compatibilities and incompatibilities between all of these. Uh, but it is kind of clear that a key part of making a model fair involves decisions about what properties to prioritize. Uh, so this leads to the question, uh, what are the right choices in these trade-offs? Uh, how can data scientists know that the trade-off they're making is the right one? So we don't claim to be able to answer these questions, but knowing what people outside of this uh, sort of specialized technical field uh, think should be instructive. Um, if you can't satisfy every mathematical definition, uh, does that mean that you can't satisfy data subjects? Um, to, study these excuse me, uh, to study these questions, we conducted an online survey uh, where we asked participants to make a judgment about the fairness and bias of models within a trade-off of properties. Uh, we motivated this choice with a hypothetical scenario drawn from Compass. Uh, we told survey participants the city was trying to choose between two models which would be used to make bail decisions. Uh, we, had, we showed participants two models and we asked them to rate the fairness and bias. Uh, then we showed them the other model in this pair, and th th these were shown in randomized order. Uh, we then asked them to compare. Uh, each pair of models exhibited two sides in a trade-off between two properties. So for example, this trade-off was between accuracy and false positives. Um, so model X has equal accuracy between white and African-American uh, dependents, but uh, disparate rates of uh, mistaken <coughs> denial of bail, and model Y is the opposite. Uh, we also asked participants uh, to say whether they would prefer either model over a judge. Um, so each trade-off was a combination of two properties. Uh, we've discussed accuracy and false positive or mistaken denial of bail uh, already through the Compass example. We also tested outcomes, raw percentage of participants, uh, uh, or excuse me, uh, raw percentage of people from each group granted bail. Um, and we also tested whether or not race was an explicit input to the model. Um, we also varied which group was disadvantaged by the models in order to test whether if the disadvantaged group was majority or minority uh, affected these judgments. So this gave us a 12 distinct trade-off groups and 24 models total. Um, our participant population was a typical, uh, typical MTurk sample, so somewhat younger, uh, somewhat more educated, and somewhat more male than census. Um, so this is the Compass decision. What did people think? Um, so it turns out that a statistically significant portion of participants felt that the model that equalized false positives was the superior choice. So this chart shows the distribution of, oh, excuse me. Um, so this bar chart shows the distribution of preferences uh, for each of these models. And the top row is the trade-off where uh, African-American defendants were disadvantaged and um, the bottom row is where white uh, defendants were disadvantaged. So model X is the compass model. 
um, the light and dark pink show the people who said they probably or definitely preferred this model, and there aren't very many of them. Uh, conversely, many more participants favored Model Y. About 54% of participants when white defendants were disadvantaged, and 57% when African American defendants were disadvantaged. So these preferences were statistically significant, uh, but more because not very many people preferred Model Y, excuse me, Model X, uh, rather than Model Y. The people who preferred Model Y are a bare majority. So in fact, all of the trade-offs we examined, there was no clearly favored models. Um, and so these are the distributions of answers across all of the trade-offs we looked at. Um, each row is a trade-off, and each side is a model within that trade-off. Had there been any clear trend, we would have seen sort of a, a bar of all green or a bar, bar of all pink. Um, in fact, only three out of uh, the trade-offs uh, we investigated did 50% or more uh, participants in that trade-off group express a preference. Um, and at the same time, the decisions we studied were controversial. Uh, a lot of people chose sort of definitely one or definitely the other, in fact, about 39%. Um, given that a large number of our participants had such strong opinions about which model they would prefer, we expected that this would mean they would prefer that model over a judge. Um, so this is a preference for judge and the false positive accuracy trade-off that we looked at before. Um, but it turns out, no. Um, as you can see, there was a preference even though there was a preference for one model over the other, uh, that did not mean that a model was necessarily preferred over a judge. Um, participants tended to explain these preferences uh, with judges' discretion and training. One participant explained this by saying, um, their preference for humans by saying, human judges, by saying, uh, programmers aren't trained to at least try not to be biased. Um, so we also asked par uh, participants not just about choice, but out about perceptions of fairness and bias. Um, I can see I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to say basically fairness is not the same thing as bias. We saw a lot of um, uh, trade-offs where people said this model is both not biased and also not fair. Um, so to wrap up, uh, we conducted an experiment to understand what people think about difficult trade-off decisions, um, and we found that people do seem to care about these sorts of trade-off decisions, but they disagree as to how they should be solved. So in other words, the trade-offs are political and we can't resolve mathematical problems uh, through polling. Instead, we think that uh, we should seek to resolve these questions through standard uh, public democratic processes of deliberation and accountability. Thanks. Oh, oh my. There we go, sorry. <laughs>